Howdy. Happy Pentecost Sunday. Jordan, tell us what it means. Um, I think it's where we hear it for the Holy Spirit and we celebrate the Holy Spirit, but I don't know why. Can you tell me why? To change the world, obviously. Obviously. Yeah. So let's hear it for the Holy Spirit. Woo! <laughs> Welcome to our life-giving local church where you'll discover the friendship and the support that you have been seeking. Yes, at Echo, our aim is to help you find your place, your people, and your purpose. We believe these are the essentials of a fulfilling life and we're excited to journey with you. Join us for our services at Mayo High School on Sundays at 9.15 a.m. or 10.45 a.m. We're eager to meet you and we want to extend a warm welcome to the Echo Church family. Yes, Echo Church is supported by the generosity of hundreds of people like you. Mm. Without your contributions, Echo wouldn't exist, so thank you. I wouldn't exist? Oh boy, existential crisis here. <laughs> For those who want to join us in making a positive impact in Rochester, you have two convenient options. First, visit our website, or you can easily send your contribution via Venmo Ooh. to We Are The Echo Church. Is that the two options? That's the two options. So we deeply appreciate your generosity. Bye. Enjoy Echo Online Service. <laughs>
in the name of Jesus. Does anybody agree with that out there today? I am so thankful that Jesus knows us by name. That we're not just a crowd, but we're an individual. We're a person. We're a child of God that he cares for. And he knows you intimately. And he desires a relationship with you. He wishes that he wasn't an afterthought, but a first thought in your life. What I love about church is this, it's a weekly reset to just show up and say, God, you know what? I have thought about many other things than you, but today I pause and I put you first. Lord, would you begin to reset us, renew us? Can we pray for today? Can we pray what God's, I sense that God's gonna do something great today. Uh, Jesus, our hearts are here, our life is here. For many that are in the front row, our children are here. God, would you just grab a hold of our life? We submit to the idea that you want to do something from the inside out, and here we are. Would you speak to us? Not necessarily from what Pastor Christie has to say, but what you have to directly say to us. Make us aware of you and what you're doing. May your voice be the loudest in our life. In Jesus' name, and everybody said, amen. amen. Is God good? Yes. He is, he is. Parents are making their way up here. What we're gonna do is take just a few moments and do what we call child dedication, which we believe is a spiritual activity. And uh, for those that are unaware of what child dedication is all about, it really is birthed from the idea that Jesus himself was dedicated to the temple on the eighth day. So Jesus, who we submit our life to, right? We put our focus on. If he was dedicated, how much more do we need to be dedicated? Can someone say amen out there? Y'all get what I'm saying there? And so we have all these beautiful parents that have to really kind of cram in a little bit closer, <laughs> come closer. Um, and we're going to be praying for the children and dedicating and just giving God like what is already his, if that makes sense. And uh, so just to kind of let you know what we're doing today is we're presenting uh, our children back to God. We understand that they're a gift, that we aren't owners of our children. We are just simple stewards. And uh, what a gift they are to us. The second thing we're going to do today is, is, you know, again, sometimes some of us parents, we just need a reminder. We're going to thank God for our children because they are a blessing. Come on, someone say amen. amen. They are a blessing. Uh, we also, you know, when I see these beautiful children up here, I'm reminded that they have, that God has a plan and they have a purpose for their life. And so what we want to do is just celebrate that and, and, and speak that life into them and believe in them right here from the get-go. And, and lastly, at the end here, we're going to pray for them because we're going to pray that God blesses them and he keeps them and does what God does and what he's doing. Here's the best children's pastor in the world. Let's hear it for Sammy Sam Pennant. Thank you. All right, a little uh, biblical background, okay, on child dedication. Why do we do this? Proverbs 22, 6 says, train a child in the way they should go, and they will not depart from it. Child dedication is a moment for us as parents and as a church body to acknowledge that our children are, in fact, not our own. Hi, Bubby. Sorry, I'm really distracted. My cute baby is on stage. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Biblically, we do see examples that we are called to give God our children and that we believe in return, God will give them back to us. This is the heart behind child dedication, which is inspired by a story um, in 1 Samuel about Hannah. Hannah was barren for many, many years and all she wanted was a child. So she cried out to God with everything she had. She said, Lord, I promise if you bless me with a child, I will give him back to you for your good, for your service. And he did. And Hannah had Samuel. And as soon as Samuel was weaned, she gave him over to the temple to serve the Lord daily. And that simple act 
is what led Mary and Joseph to dedicate Jesus at the temple many, many years later. So today at Echo, we are going to do our best to follow that biblical example and dedicate our children. We're gonna do so by declaring truth, by promising our best, and by lastly praying over all these beautiful children. So parents, I have a couple I do statements for you. I'm just gonna simply state them and then we'll all say I do at the end of the statement, okay? There's four of them. Do you recognize that your child is a gift from God? I do. Do you dedicate your child to God? I do. Do you pledge as Christ followers to model what it looks like to look to Jesus for direction, wisdom, compassion, and guidance? I do. Do you promise to pray for your child on a regular basis? I do. Great job, good. Okay, so next we are gonna take some time to pray over these children. And we love the power of names over here at Echo. So we also are gonna take a minute just to state each child's name and what that name means. We believe that we can speak life into these kids, that um, we can really just speak identity into them, bless them, and then of course, just lift them up as a church body. All right, we're gonna start right here. So we're praying for Aubriana and then Caitlin Ann, all right? Yes, Kate, Aubriana yeah. and Caitlin Ann. Okay, God, we just come to you right now and we just thank you for these precious children. God, we pray for a blessing over their lives. God, we pray that you will just continue to guide, protect. God, I pray for purity. God, I pray for them to radiate, radiate your love. And we just thank you for the gift that they are. We pray for an abundance and blessing in your name. Amen. Who do we have here, Christy? Charlotte. Charlotte. Let's pray for Charlotte. What a blessing. It means freedom. Lord, we pray for Charlotte. We give her her whole life to you. We ask that you would keep her. God, that you would speak to her, that she would know your voice. And God, I'm just sensing, God, that you would even use her to be an element of freedom and even her own family, Lord, that, that you would just use her to, to, to open maybe a whole new life to these beautiful parents in Jesus' name, amen. amen. All right, and we have Eleanor Marie. And Eleanor means shining light and beloved. She's ready to go, okay? So we're gonna pray. God, we just come to you right now and we lift up Eleanor to you, God. And I just thank you for her life. God, we know that she has a purpose that's eternal. We pray for her to be able to shine her light, God, all the days of her life, set her apart, call her by name, God, and we just dedicate her to you in your name, amen. amen. Who do we have next here? Elias James. Elias, Elias means... God has answered and the Lord is my God. Can, can someone say amen, amen out there? Amen to that. Yes. Jesus, we pray for Elias. And we thank you for these beautiful, tiny little feet. God, may they run. Yes. God, but run with you in mind. May it go places with you there next to his side. God, I just ask you would empower his parents to model what it means to love you with all of their hearts. And may he do the same. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs> what a stud. So cute. It matches down. I got to get that outfit. I like it. <laughs> Hello. All right. This is Grace Ann. And Grace <laughs> Ann means goodness, generosity, and God's favor. So we're just going to pray over her right now. God, we just thank you for grace. God, we thank you for her life, God. I just pray for her to be courageous. I pray for her to be just generous with who she is as she grows up, God. I pray for direction over mom and dad as they are raising her up, God. I pray for discernment. I pray for perseverance, God, and patience. And we just thank you for her life. We thank you for the grace that you have given to her, God. And we just pray for all the lessons that she has, God. And we just thank you for the tenderness of this moment, God, that you will continue calling her by name. In your name, amen. I know I'm a scary person. <laughs> it's my Stranger mustache. danger. It's, it's actually it's my mustache. mustache. It yeah. is. It's his mustache. Yeah. Yeah. I get All right. it. Dad, they need to work on that next time. We got Graham Alexander. Means courage, loyalty, man's defender, and warrior. Okay, come on. Look at that. Graham. Oh, God, we just pray for Graham. We lift him up. We yeah. give him to you, this little warrior. Yes. He, looks, he doesn't look like it at the moment, but Lord, we know that's what you're creating within him. God, that you would just give him boldness, 
that you would guide his steps and that you would be with him everywhere he goes. And, and God, bless his parents. God, guide them. May you pull them into the deep recesses of a relationship with you that they might be able to do the same for Graham. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Yeah. All right. We have little Ivy. Ivy Rain means vine, wise commander, and counsel. Okay. Cute dress. All right. Ivy, hi. God, we just come to you right now and we just lift up Ivy to you, God. And I just pray over her, God, for her to live a life of fearlessness. God, we pray for her joy that she brings into every room. God, we pray for the purpose. God, you have called her and set her apart, God. And I just pray for you to equip Carissa and Tate and being her parents, God, guiding her all the days of their lives, God. I pray for the humility represented when we raise these kids. God, and I just thank you for Ivy's life. We thank you for the gift that she is. And we just set her apart in this moment in your name. Amen. All right, oh my word. Okay, Jack Allen means God is gracious, little rock. Oh, so cute. Little rock. Little, you said Jack the Rock? Yeah, Jack the Rock, okay. Sounds like a wrestler. Okay. <laughs> God, we thank you for Jack. Yes. God, what a blessing, God, that he is here. and. Mm -hmm. He's a miracle. We thank you. And we're reminded of that today. And we just ask that you would just bring such blessing to him that it might flow through him. God, that you would just guide and you'd lead, that, that he would learn your voice and become the man of God that you have ordained him to be. Be with his parents. Guide him. Lead him. Love him. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. Okay, we got Koa over here. Koa James, yes, we can clap. You guys can clap for the games. He's got Koa a fan means club. warrior, new line, and God protects. Yeah, that's you. Let's pray for you. God, we just lift up Koa to you right now. God, I just pray, I just feel in this moment the anointing on his life, God. I pray for a confidence that comes from you and not of this world, God. I pray for you to give him a confidence to live for you all the days of his life. Equip Isaiah and Lizzie and leading him and guiding him and loving him, God. I pray for you to bring unity in his life when he is loving others, God. Thank you for this life. Thank you for the gift that he is, God, for the gift of smiles and laughter. And we just lift him up to you in this moment in your name, amen. Amen. Hi, guys. All right. And we have Nevea Rose, which means heaven, love, and beauty. Yeah, and look at those eyes. Yes. Yeah. Lord, right. we just bless Nevea today. What a gift. What a gift she is. God, I just ask that you would open her eyes to you. Yes. To the fullness of what you have to offer and who you've called her to be. We thank you for this daughter. That God ultimately will, I believe, reveal your goodness and your kindness to the world around her. And so we just ask that you would bless her, you would keep her, you guide the parents, you'd bless them as well. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. All right, and we have Olivia Nagoli. Did I say that right? Nagoli, amazing name, I love it. It means peace, new beginnings, and helper. She's like, who are you? All right, we're going to Does anybody pray. see yeah. those cheeks, mind you? Yes, I mean, legendary. Oh. Okay, here we go. God, we just lift up Olivia to you right now, and we just thank you for her life, God. I love that her name means helper, God, and we just pray for protection over her life. God, we thank you for using her life for you, God, and we just pray for all the days of her life, God. We pray that she hears your voice, she knows your voice. God, I pray for an overflow of love, joy, peace, self-control and hope, God. And we just thank you for who she is, God. Use her life for something for you, God. And we just lift this up in your name. Amen. 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 Oh, who's this little man? Yeah, who is this Show De This is not Dexter Jr., even though you may think so. This is Malachi Moses, which means messenger of God to draw out. I know he's tired. He can sleep. Oh. God, we thank you for Malachi. God, we thank you for this messenger. God, we thank you the message of, that, that he brings us today of your goodness, of your greatness, of your love, your joy, your grace, your mercy, God. God, we don't deserve gifts like this, but we say thank you. And we just ask that even on this early age, God, that, that he would learn to hear your voice, 
Yes. But not just hear it, but apply it, to live it, to be faithful with the gifts that you give him and the calling that you have for his life. Bless these parents because they need it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. <laughs> All right, Come. let's give it up for these amazing families. That's so nice. Let me just bring all my things here. Oh, thanks, Randy. Thank you. Hi, how's everyone doing? Just dropping my stuff off. My name's Christy. If I have not met you, I'm one of the pastors here at Echo. Who agrees with me that life can be a little crazy, hectic, exhausting, overwhelming? Should I keep going? Who tired? Who tired? It's all good. Okay, let me get situated here. I cannot wait to implant God's word into you today. <laughs> I love how that's like part of our, our brand and theme always is we just roll with the screw-ups in the video. It's my fave. It's great. But I think we can all agree that life is crazy, right? And so I thought I would just showcase an example of how my life is a little hectic and crazy is by showing you and sharing with you some text messages that I have received just showing you how needed I am on a daily basis. Would you like to hear them? All right. So I have three daughters for those of you that don't know. They are seven 11 and 14, they are awesome. And so we have a home phone that they share and then, you know, the glorious iPad that they find a way to communicate with us throughout the day. So let's start with this one. Mom, 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 I want you from Keza. <laughs> Isn't that great? I never want her to grow out of that. She, that is her line, I want you. It means I want cuddles, I want mom time. It's pretty great. I love it. Here's another one. Can I have bread with butter? They can eat a loaf in a day, not naming names, or English muffin, or bagels. Do we have black ink? The printer is out, urgent. Are the strawberries in the fridge for us to eat? See, we have arrived at the point in life with some little freedom and independence is that I buy food to make a meal, and then I go to make said meal, and half of our ingredients are gone. Anyone? Yes. Yes. So they need to ask permission. Mom, where are you? Anyone run late in this room? Just me? Deep, here we go. I want to go to Hollister <laughs> on a Sunday afternoon when mom's tired after Echo. I won't name names. I love you, mom. Aww. Do we have raincoats? Mom, it's pouring out and I need one for the bus stop. I said, yes, we have Kirkland raincoat in closet from Costco. Anyone Costco mom here? That's my wardrobe in my 40s, it's great. But that wasn't cool enough. Again, saw, received two text messages with some links to Amazon Prime with more stylish raincoats. <laughs> Let's just say they got wet. <laughs> Andy and I just went on an amazing vacation, God bless it, and we sent him a, a, a C selfie, I don't even know what to call it, a photo of us, and I got, Mom, I see those muscles. Sheesh, Zion. <laughs> And I'm just gonna hold on to that one tight because literally yesterday my daughter also told me that I have a mom bod. What does that even mean? <laughs> yeah, I've, I, I birthed you. That's what happened. And then the last one is, can I grab $2 from dad's money stash? <laughs> I think we need a new hiding spot. Anyone have hiding spots? We're old school. We got some random drawers with the money stash. Beautiful. I get into dad's money stash too. <laughs> oh yeah. But I think we can agree that life is crazy. That's just a little snippet of my life. So let's read some scripture. I need some encouragement. Let's get some encouragement going on here. So if you have your Bibles or you have your iPhone, download that Bible app, turn it on. We're gonna go into the New Testament in the book of Romans. It's after the four gospels. And we're gonna start in chapter 12. So Romans 12, and we're gonna be reading, reading verses one and two right off the bat, okay? And this is the message version. The message version I love reading as it is the everyday common language. It's how we sound right now. I love reading all the different versions, but this is a good one for us to read and apply to our life. So here's what I want you to do. God helping you take your everyday, ordinary life, you're sleeping, you're eating, you're going to work, you're walking around life and place it before God as an offering. Say offering. Embracing what God does for you is the best thing you can do for him. Don't become so well-adjusted to your culture 
underline your, that you fit into it without even thinking. Instead, fix your attention on God. You will be changed from the inside out. Readily recognize what he wants from you and quickly respond to it. Not slowly respond to it, quickly respond to it. Unlike the culture around you, always dragging you down to levels of immaturity, God brings out the best in you, develops well-formed maturity in you. Who wants to get a little more mature today? I'm on a journey. It's a good thing. Why, why do we read this scripture? Is I think that we all live ordinary lives and we can downplay what our actions look like. We downplay the day in and the day out, the tasks, the people in our life. And a lot of times we can focus, at least for myself, if I'm speaking for my life, is I can get fixated on the mountaintops and the valleys, the peaks in my life and the low points in my life. But I think the best way that we can serve God, live for God, is how we live our ordinary, everyday life. So let's talk about my ordinary life. Why did I bring all these things on stage? Is to show you a little portrayal of a common day in Christy Cass' life. Who wants to learn with me? Okay, so we got the keys. This is a big one. Anyone forget their keys and you're running around dripping sweat before even leaving the house? Um, I got really responsible probably about four years ago and I bought a key hook, about $5 at Target, hanging in the mudroom, and I keep keys hanging 98% of the time. Now, game changer. It is amazing. For years, I would look everywhere, you know, try to find the jacket I wore the day before, or it's in my, I still, ooh, hello, it's in my car. It can be anywhere, but key hook with a very masculine bracelet for Andy when he's driving my minivan. It's great. Then we have the beverages. Who likes options and drinks? I love them. This is actually not that many. Normally, I have a coffee. This is a matcha right now, which I love matcha as well. Then I'm in my 40s trying to take care of my cortisol levels, so I'm drinking electrolytes. Shout out to the, my people who are teaching me things. We got the water because we drink more water when we have a Stanley. Water bottles matter, Andy. Where are you? I want options. All right. So this, a couple days ago, I was walking out of the house, and I just had this moment as I was preparing for this message. I'm like, dude, I'm so tired before I even leave the house, okay? So a lot of times, I leave the home first time I leave in the day because my oldest children now walk to the bus stop. I used to drive them to the bus, but I realized you're 11 and 14 and God gave you legs and you're gonna use them, okay? So parents, that's a permission for have your kids walk. It's good. Okay, so then I have lunchbox for my youngest child who wants me to carry everything. This is her lunchbox that Pastor Sam got her. It is bigger than her face. Usually there's four pre-made items, granola bar, fruit strip, applesauce pouch. That's her, you know, lunch of champions because I'm that mom. So I'm carrying this for her because her arms hurt, legs hurt, whatever it is. Then we always have the purse. I have a goal of having the small purse. I go in phases. Big tote stresses me out. I'm in a current phase of Christy wants small purse so I don't lose my things. So that's when I'm going in and out of the store. So leaving my house on Thursday. Then we live in an era where when you go to the store, they make you pay for grocery bags. Why is that? I know why the earth, okay, you don't need to tell me. But I always forget the bag and I have 27 at home. So then I go to the beauty supply store on Thursday because I was gonna work in my salon and I actually remembered. Um, but many days I'm taking multiple trips out to my van with color tubes and all of the things. So I have a cute bag, okay? So there's Thursday, still going, still going. Then I have this tote. It's a nice medium LL Bean tote. Anyone a fan? Big fan of the tote. Okay, so these are heavy duty, durable, and this is for Christy just to throw all the things. So I tend to be an overachiever in my day where I think I'm gonna get to more things. Anyone think you're gonna get to more things? Who brings books just like for the free time? <laughs> right, I do. I have snacks because I'm usually starving, kind of crabby when I'm hungry. I have lots of zipper pouches. This usually has a lot of random items that I need. Chapstick, lotion. Very, very important. I always have my Bible. I have lots of different Bibles. I believe in options. But why do I bring this Bible? Because I need the Lord and I need him to fill me up. So I start my day with reading the Bible and then I'm bringing it and I'm reading it, whether it's in a pickup line or I'm at Starbucks or whatever the case may be. Then I have art. I had, um, this is a representation. I was packaging artwork on Thursday as well. Um, Malia, where are you? I have your word of the year. True story. You're here. Hi, here's your word of the year. You want to give it to her? I'm dead serious, because that's what we're doing. John Haywood, are you here? I have your word of the year. All right, so I'm usually hauling things because I'm running extra errands, or I am trying to get things for people. Then I'm a notebook girl, pen and paper, baby. Who's a pen and paper? We have the iPhone notes. We have all the things, but I like notebook. And then there's other random things and other zipper pouch options. So this is just showing you. This is me. 
walking out of my house with all of these things already tired for the day. And what this showcases for me when I look at it is we have a lot on our plate, don't we? Whether you are a mother like me or you are a friend, a colleague, I'm unloading because I'm hot too. This is a thing, flashes right now. <laughs> but we have a lot of situations. This is sponsored by Thrive Market too. It's a good thing. I like to grocery shop online, true story. Saves me time. But we all can reveal we have a lot of struggles. We all can agree to that. We have a lot of challenges, okay? So where I go right now is not to be like, have you just go, yeah, me too, overwhelmed. Thanks for that encouraging word. I hope that I can equip you with maybe some ways that we can breathe, that we can take a deep breath, that we can give God what we're going through, that we can give God our day. And so how do we do that? It's us looking at the word. It's us asking God to, for him to reveal things to us, okay? So I want to jump to another scripture in 1 Peter. This is chapter 4. 1 Peter chapter 4 is, we're going to look at verses 8 through 11. And this is about services and gifts, okay? So I'm here today to inform you that you all have the gift, a gift inside you and you all have services that you can give to others, Okay? So he is speaking to a group of Christians. He's giving them practical advice. And that's my goal right now is that I'm speaking to you and giving you some practical advice. We don't need to overcomplicate it. We don't need to say that's for you, not for me. But hopefully this can speak directly to you. And it says this, above all, love each other deeply. Because love covers a multitude of sins. Not love each other surface level. Not love each other if you do this for me. Not love each other when I'm around you, but when I walk away, I don't believe it. But love each other deeply. Verse 9 is offer hospitality to one another without grumbling. Underline without grumbling. Any grumblers in the room? Who likes to talk under their breath? Me. Talk under my breath all the time. And Andy typically is like, I hear you. I hear you talking right now. Oh, sorry about that. Working on that. All right, verse 10, each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. I'm going to say that again. Each of you should use whatever gift you have received to serve others. What gifts do you have? As faithful stewards of God's grace in various forms. What, what is he talking about here? Is that it's us looking and going, what gift has God given me? I made this painting actually this week for Bree, who's a nurse. It was nurse, pre, nurse practitioner, but we're honoring the nurse in you. You know, yep. Um, but honoring the, what you do every single day. It's the various forms. It's God, I have this gift. It could be a skill set. It could be, we talk about this in echo culture. It can be an ability that God's given you. But how can you use it to care for others, to show hospitality? Because how we steward it matters. And so I'm here today to tell you, don't, don't like minimize that. And it doesn't matter on your age. Teenagers, children, you have gifts. I am blown away at seeing the gifts in kids. My own daughter, my second born, is brilliant with kids. I don't even know if Zakiah is in here, but I get text messages every week. Zakiah was so good with my child. Like it is a gift. I'm scanning to see if you're here, but it is a gift that you have, Zakiah. It's not just like, oh, you're fun, but you connect with kids. That is a gift that God's given you. And then to the older people, if you're retired, you're here with your grandkids, you're, you are an empty nester, God still has gifts inside you. We've never arrived in our life where we're like, that was for then, this is for now. Maybe there's a new gift that he's trying to brew up in you for you to steward. Verse 11, if anyone speaks, they should do so as one who speaks the very word of God. Our words matter. How are we using them? If anyone serves, they should do so as the strength God provides. You see, you're not, even on a Sunday morning, you're not coming here to serve me. You're serving Jesus. When you go to work, you're not, like, you're not, you're serving God in how you serve people. When you go home, you're serving God in how you serve your family. So do that in all things. God may be praised through Jesus Christ. He, to him be the glory and the power forever and ever. Amen. Can we say Amen. So what do you think of when you hear these words? Who's encouraged? Anyone get like a little shameful? I know for me, I read this and I've been reading it over and over and over this week as I'm preparing and I can get frustrated with myself. I think of all the things in all the areas of my life where I'm failing. Maybe you hear this and you wanna throw up your hands, shout and clap and you're like, I got this. But I think for us, it's looking at it and going, okay, God, how does it look for me to do this? How can I do this? 
So how do we apply this scripture into our everyday, ordinary life? Number one is we need to love people. Love is the number one thing that we need to carry with us. It needs to bleed out of us. It needs to bleed into us. Genuine love to me is that when you look at Peter, he is emphasizing the importance of genuine love. He's showing words and descriptions is that we need forgiveness. Maybe you're here today and Mother's Day brings up unforgiveness in your life. It's a hard day. Maybe you, need, you have unforgiveness with God. And I'm not minimizing pain in your story. I'm not minimizing maybe a prayer that you are still waiting on. But it's saying, God, I need you. Because I know for me, when I've had unforgiveness, I think of very pivotal moments in my life where I have dealt with that unforgiveness. I felt like it was killing me. I was carrying around all this weight of unforgiveness. And it's, there's so much power in saying, I am sorry. I choose to forgive you. Some of you have been around a while, but Andy and I spoke a message last year on entering a conversation pre-forgiving. Anyone remember that? So you go into that conversation saying, I am going to forgive you. That is the expectation and the result that I'm looking for. Empathy. We need empathy again. We live in a society where it is telling us everywhere why we don't need empathy. But as Christ followers, we need empathy. Do you walk by someone hurting and have empathy? Or do you judge? Or do you ignore? And then we need to care for others. So genuine love is important. Another layer of this is hospitality. Hospitality is something that has been lost when I look around this world. But as Christ followers, as believers, is that we are encouraged to be generous with others. You see, yes, you can open your home, your physical home up to people. Yes, you can host people in the workplace. Or I can go into the school where my daughters are at and show hospitality and how I treat the team, how I treat the children. On Sunday mornings when I'm here, there is ample amount of opportunity for us to show hospitality. And it's especially important for us to show hospitality for those that are in need. That's what I love about Sundays. It's because I wouldn't be here today if I didn't walk through the doors of a church 20 some years ago in need and people showed me hospitality and led me to the Lord. And you see, we need to do all that without complaining. And I have an analogy for you that I've been thinking about because I'm a visual and I like examples and illustrations, so bear with me, is I have a question for you. Is are you living like you are in a hotel or a home? Okay, so we're going to break this down a little bit. The hotel life. Who loves a ho good hotel? I love it. Okay, so what do, what do I love about hotels? Number one, they turn down my bed sometimes if you're at a really nice hotel. I've actually asked, can you just turn down my bed? Anyone ever been there? I have. It's amazing. It's beautiful. Who likes room service? Yes, none of you. Room service. <laughs> Breakfast delivered, knock on the door, silver platter lifted. I don't even care how much it is. Give me the French toast. It's great. I love the little Nespresso machine. I love a little patio or if I'm in like a tropical place where I will go find a palm tree and just sit under it. Um, hotels. I love when they, I have traveled for work where there's like a large group blocking of rooms because we're all there and they know our names are like ready. They have our name tags. They're greeting me by like, hello, Mr. and Mrs. Cass. Hello. I like the greeting, the hospitality. Why do I love it? Is because I get to have some convenience. I commonly will say like, I don't need, no one needs anything of me. I can sleep in. I can wear the white robe. I can put on the slippers. I can take a bath. Some of you are like, ew, you use the hotel bath? Sure do. <laughs> Looking at some people. Sure do. Say a prayer. Call it good. <laughs> Confession. How many of you go in a hotel and you investigate if this is a place you're actually going to stay at? Any of you ever have left? Come on, confession's good. Who has left the hotel because it's nasty? Who has not left the hotel because there's no other options? Me. I remember being pregnant, six months pregnant with my, young, my middle child. I was in um, New York. I don't even know the town. I should know it. West Point Academy town. Okay. That's where I was. And I was there. We arrived. It was super late. I was doing hair. Actually, Brie Mullen was with me. And there was no other options. It was Memorial Weekend, graduation weekend, and it was busy. And we got there. And let's just say cinder blocks, drug deals, blood, hair, barf. Okay? <laughs> disgusting. Like, I'm not making this up. It was disgusting. That was not a hotel mindset that I enjoyed, okay? That is not what I signed up for. And mind you, it was very expensive because there, there was no competition. It was great. All right, the home mindset. 
Home mindset for me is that we value relationships and community over everything. Home mindset for me is that we are all actively participating in the tasks at hand, the responsibilities at hand. That we are actively saying, God, how can I can contribute to the other people in my life that today? We're all taking responsibility for upkeep, or at least that's my goal. That's what I'm trying to train my kids and my husband to do, is that we all are like, hey, what can we do to lighten the load, right? We're demonstrating care and consideration. And you see, when I look at the two contrasts, is the whole hotel mindset is that we prioritize personal comfort over others. It's all about me. I am here, and I want to rest. Home mindset is that we value relationships and we are actively contributing to the other people's well-being. You see, as a Christian, we are called to live a life like we are living in a home. Every space we walk into is how can I participate? How can I share this? How, who can I bless today? Who can I help? Who can I serve? You see, and even here today, using church as an example, as some of you are guests, thank you for coming. We want you here. We want you to feel loved. But there is a whole crew of people that make today's, like, today happen by serving, by coming in, by turning a high school into a church, by all the chords that you see, the music, the LED wall that's giving me a light show, that we have, like, the bloom bar, we have the coffee, we have all these things because we are treating this like our home because we want you to feel loved. We, want, we do it for you. We want you to feel seen. And so there's some questions that I like to ask myself that I'm teaching my family on a daily basis. And if you want to write these down, if you're taking notes, and they're super simple questions, but what would your life look like if you applied these questions to your life every day? And I even think maybe there's an area in your life where you're feeling the most challenged in of like, these people are hard to love. Or Christy, you don't understand. But I ask, I ask you these questions to maybe position yourself in a posture of humility and growth. Number one is how can I serve you? What if you walked into work tomorrow morning and saw a coworker and said, how can I serve you? If you're a boss, if you have people below you on the totem pole, what it, would it look like if you walked in and said, how can I serve you today? You see, because the higher up that you are, the more people God is giving you, the bigger the capacity for you to serve, not for them to serve you. Second question is, how can I bless you? I just read a book uh, a couple weeks ago on a marriage book, and one area in my life I've been very convicted in is how I love Andy. It gets comfortable. We've been together for over two decades. We went on this amazing vacation where we got to step away from life, and I said, I'm going to read not a self, like a leadership book. I read a lot of nonfiction. I'm going to read a book on our marriage not a ministry book. I want to read something on our marriage. And the whole takeaway I had was what would my life look like? What would his life look like if every single day I said, how can I bless you? And it's not easy sometimes because we want people to do things for us or we can have every excuse of why we're not going to ask that question. God wants to take the bricks down brick by brick. Third is how can I make your life easier? I love this one. What can I take off your plate is another way to put it. And then um, fourth is, who can I share this moment with? Any of you like to do tasks by yourself? I do. I get a lot done when I'm by myself. But who can I share this moment with? Who can I teach? There's been moments after moments even of where I, as a mom, my girls are coming to me and I realize, oh my word, they're like, how do I do this? I'm like, I haven't taught you this yet. I thought I taught you or I thought you knew how to make avocado toast. That happened yesterday. And I was getting a FaceTime call. I'm like, you just smashed the avocado on the toast. You know, but it's just, it's teaching people. It's who can we share these moments with, these experiences with, these days with. When I run errands, taking my kids with me because it's fun. And then the, the last one that I love, this is my favorite that I'm teaching um, my family all the time is what's next. You're like, what's next? It means when you get to the bottom of the list or maybe you're at work and you're, who likes anyone ever guilty of killing time until the, the, it hits five o'clock, if you're clocking, clock out, or it's slow on the floor in your unit, it's going, what's next? What can I do next? What can I do that's above and beyond? You know, my kids can tackle a list, a project um, that I write down for them, um, the beautiful love notes I leave on our kitchen counter, especially in the summertime or school days off. And my favorite thing is, mom, what's next? A lot of times it'll be, you're good. Go have fun. 
but it's the heart of the position of like, where are you, are you still working on something that I can help you with? Anyone? You're like, yes. All right. And another thing is I want to challenge us is that we, it's looking at our life and going, okay, God, if I'm going to live in this mentality, if I'm going to shift gears is it's using your spiritual gifts. You all have spiritual gifts. I have conversations with people all the time that don't realize that. And so I just say, like, open the word. Have conversations with people here even of going, what is a spiritual gift? Spiritual gifts are gifts that God has given you that live inside you. And they are for us to receive from him that we will use them to serve others and to build up this community. You see, spiritual gifts are gifts that God gives us that are not for me. They are for us to share with the world. A gift that I have is hospitality. It's not, and I actually like hosting in our home. So I geek out over the details. I geek out over before people walk in the door. I want candles lit, diffusers on. What's the mood of the music? I have, you know, clean tan towels in the bathroom. I'm changing them halfway through for hosting a ton of people because gross wet towels, anyone? Yuck. You're like, how long has this been here? But I like the details. I love making food spreads pretty and like moving things around and envisioning how can people sit in a space where they can have conversation. And so that's not a gift just for me to hoard and hold for myself and even for my family, but it's who can I invite in to my space. And so the gift that's in you is not just for you to hold on to yourself. And I wanna tell you this, is if you're spending your life envious of the gifts that other people have, then you're wasting time too. That they, these gifts are meant to be celebrated. I do not have the gift of worship and musical expression. I cannot sing a note for the life of me. Like if, if it's quiet, I'm like mouthing the words. Like I'm that ashamed of my voice and it's okay. Other people have the gift, but it's not me spending my life going, God, I really wish you would give me a voice. Now, do I throw a prayer out here and there? God, give the gift to one of my three girls. Yes, I do. But gifts equal responsibilities. And responsibilities mean that it requires work. If I remember I was given a car in college. I was wrapping up college four years and I was heading to hair school at Aveda and I was carless in Duluth for four years. Y'all, that is not a flat town. Hilly, okay? And I remember a gift was given to me, a 1992 Geo Prism. It was amazing. It was red. Woo, yes, it was awesome. And they gave me this car. And I remember it was like, it, they gave me a brand new vehicle that had all the bells and whistles, but it was worth under 500 and it had a canoe rack that I would never use, but it was the gift. Now the gift was free, but I had responsibility. You know, I had to get a title. I had to put gas in it. I had to have insurance. I took care of the gift that God gave me. And so a lot of times we're like, we just want it to be easy, but it's a requirement of us using our time for it and being responsible. So how do we do these things? How do we live? I think a great way to start is to look at God and say, God, show me, okay? So when we look at Jesus in the New Testament is one of my favorite things to see him doing. And it's like, I'd say the lowest thing that he could have done, but he positioned himself to do it with joy is that he washed the disciples' feet. You see, in that time, the disciples, like who were spending time with Jesus every single day, is a lot of times people would come into spaces and it was common act to have your feet washed. But oftentimes it was by a servant. You'd come into a home, they had tons of dust on them, and a servant would wash their feet to clean them before they walked in the door. Because guess what? Their feet were their main means of transportation. But what Jesus did is that he positioned himself to wash their feet. And if you read John 13, verses 14 and 15, he explains why he's doing it. Jesus explains the significance of his actions. Now that I, your Lord, your teacher, have washed your feet, you also should wash one another's feet. I have set an example that you should do so as I have done for you. So why was he doing that? He was saying, I'm doing this for you, but I expect you to do it for someone else. If you have received God's love, then we are to lead people to receive his love. If someone has served you, then we live a life like we serve someone else because he did it for us. He en emphasizes the gesture of selflessness and compassion. You see, we are to live a life of servant lifestyle that we have a willingness to sacrifice our own personal gain, personal desires for the greater good of others. That we are to focus on other people. You see, and I think one thing, when I think of motherhood and where I get crabby Christy or frustrated or discouraged is that I commonly will have dialogue in my head of no one, under, no one, no one respects me. 
No one even sees the things that I'm doing. Do you even notice anyone? Is this just me? Like, do you even notice that the counters are magically cleaned or the dishwasher is unloaded or your clothes are all folded on the stairway to not heaven but our bedrooms waiting for you to pick up pile and bring it into your room? And I have this dialogue of like, what would you guys even do without me? You see, but that is so wrong because the proof that I'm doing something good is oftentimes the things that we are for, taken for granted in. What am I saying here? Is that when nobody appreciates you, it means that they expect you to be doing these things through the example of your consistency. I'm not saying be a doormat, but I'm saying if I'm consistent, when I'm using the example of in my home, my girls know mom's gonna show up. And I'd r much rather be a mom that shows up than doesn't. I'd much rather serve them every single day in my ordinary everyday life without the expectation of all the praises. Because even if you get the praise, it lasts like a minute. Guess where our praise comes from? Through God. From God leading us. You know, he taught us the way. I love this example about when we're consistent. Okay, here's prime example. I'm the errand runner of the home. You know, Andy and I, we divide and conquer. He makes more of the dinners. I do a lot of the shopping, okay? And it's funny, because I'll say, I'll grumble. I'm working on it, but I have grumbled in the past, like, I am so sick of running errands. I'm the one that always goes to Costco, or I'm the run doing the Target run, or I'm taking the girls to get the new shoes for their sport, or whatever the case may be. And he's like, but babe, you're so good at it. Or you love shopping. <laughs> Encouragement. Love you. And, and it's funny because it's like, I, I say those things, and I want to be doing them. I just want a little praise here and there, you know? Little praise hands. But it's like last night, case in point, okay? It's 7 p.m., and my homeboy loving husband, I hear a little chatter, and it's like, we're going to be leaving, Christine, we'll be back. I'm like, oh, Mother's Day gifts, right? Anyone? Any, any fathers in the house? And he is talking to the girls after dinner. He's like, hey, we're going to go. They're like, how long are we going to be gone, Dad? It's like 45 minutes. Should we bring a blanket? Should we bring this? I mean, they were so jazzed about getting in his truck and running an errand. And I'm not dissing on Andy, but it's because... It was an out of the ordinary thing. And so they were like giving him all the praises, so hyped. Close your eyes, mom. We're hiding all the things when they came home. And I was just enjoying all of it. I don't get that reaction. It's like, get in the van. Okay, okay, mom. Do I have to go? Right? Because they know, they expect. And so it's just looking at those things. And it's not me comparing myself to him. They love us both. We're bringing different gifts to the table. Another thing that I want to say is that many of us live like we are fighting to get out of the obligation of serving. I'm going to say it again. Many of us live like we are fighting to get out of the obligation of serving. You see, we are called to follow every single ordinary day of our life. We are called to follow him. We are called to serve him. We have never gotten to a status quo where we've hired this person to do this thing. But I am a person, a mother, a friend, a leader, a wife where I never want to get to a point where I'm like, it's your turn to serve me. Another thing that God was really good at is Jesus was good at saying no. He knew what to say no to, who to say no to. He left the crowds to go to the one. He knew what God was calling him to. He had a game plan. And I believe with all of my heart that every single day he started his day was, God, where do you want me to go and who do you want me to speak to? And then the other thing is Jesus was really good at saying yes. I think it's easy for us, the older we get, to start saying no to more things. And I'm all about filling the schedule with the most important and having priorities and having boundaries. But I'm telling you what, when it comes to serving, even like let's use serving at Echo as an example, I guarantee you that your burnout does not come from greeting at a door for 10 minutes. And this is not to shame you. But I know my burnout is because I said yes to a lot of wrong things that week. Or I stayed up way too late watching a stupid show. I've been hooked on a stupid show. And I, was, I stayed up the other night. I'm like, oh, cliffhanger, one more episode. And then I'm like, I can't even have this in my life. I can't even have a show. It was the Baxters on Amazon Prime if you're like, what are you watching, Christy? Um, but it's just like understanding that. But it's saying, no, God, I am going to actively pursue you and engage with you on how I can show kindness, compassion, and to support others. And so how do we do this? As we conclude right now, is that I want you to give your burdens back to God, to take your ordinary everyday life, to not minimize who God has put in front of you, to not minimize the people that are alongside you, and to say, Jesus, 
I give you my life. Jesus, I love the scripture in Matthew 11, 28 through 30, and it says, take Jesus's yoke upon you for it is easy and light. You see, it says this, I've read this verse here on Sunday mornings, it's come to me all who are weary, weary and burdened and I will give you rest. God knows you're tired. He wants to give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me. You see, he wants us to receive his help today, to receive other people's help. That's why I love Mother's Day, all the help. I love it. But what would our life look like if we lived like that every single day? You see, Jesus is offering us to share the load with those who follow him. Yoke is a symbol, symbolizes his teachings. It symbolizes his life. It symbolizes the relationships that are included in our life every single day. And that we are called to commit our life to him. We are called to commit to his teachings. And so Echo, I just would love if you just stand to your feet as I pray over you as we close. And even just in a posture of giving God what you're going through, giving God where you're at in this moment, I ask that you simply open your hands. You can close your eyes for folk or reasons and just even process right now in this moment is where in this message is he speaking to you the most? What is he calling you back to? Who is he calling you to serve? Where is he calling you to serve? How can we live for him in the mundane, the ordinary, the everyday life? God, we come to you right now and we thank you. We thank you for this moment. God, we cannot do this alone. We are not called to do this alone. God, I pray over every single person in this room right now that they are here for a purpose, that you are calling them by name whether they come here every single week or whether they are a guest in the house today, God, I pray that you will show them that they are loved, they are chosen, they are seen. God, I pray for you to plant a seed in all of our lives, God, to show us what you have planted in us in the past. God, I pray for you to water our hearts, water our soil. God, use our life. May it be a reflection of you and not of the world. It's not about Christy gains, it's about your gains, God. God, give us empathy for the hurting and the lost. God, I pray against people feeling alone in this space right now, God. God, I pray metaphorically that we can take the load and we can hand it over to you, God. That we live for you in the ordinary, everyday life, Jesus. In your name, amen. I've been told to live my own truth, do whatever makes me feel good, get rid of boundaries, the rules are stifling, chase good feelings, soon we'll be gone. But I found myself more lost than ever Enslaved and bound to my desires That's not freedom Holy Spirit, make me more like Jesus Every day a little more like Jesus Crucify my flesh with yours My new life might be secure Everything I do so I can honor you Resurrect me, sanctify me Baby, it's to your image Make me more like you, Jesus More of you 
Praise be to God, you saved me from myself. Praise be to God, praise be to God, a new life I've been dealt. I never look back, no, I can't go back, I'm yours. No, I'll never look back, no, I can't go back, I'm yours. Praise be to God, praise be to God, praise be to God. Of mine. It's kind of a weird time, I know, but just hang with me. Uh, I like sitcom TV. I'm a kid of the 80s. I love like half hour shows that wrapped up everything at the end. But the thing that always drove me the most nuts was the dad was always an idiot. You know what I'm talking about? Like he was just kind of there, like a lump on the couch, or it was it was just always this way. And I, I want to tell you that bothered me for a long time. And Christy said something today that stuck out to me. And it's something that I've never really been able to understand or articulate the way that I've wanted to, but it makes sense today. Those shows are just extrapolating out things to an extreme, so it's funny. I get it. That's fine. But moms are so consistent and so routinely show up and are such an essential part of our lives that it's easy to forget how incredible moms are. Now, Father's Day is in June, and I'll say nice things about dads that day. But today, let's focus on the moms in the room. I think about in our family, I think about in the families I know, it's just the consistency and the ability to always put your family first, to always put others first. It's something that you do so well, moms, that I guarantee you don't get told a lot how great it is. It happens over and over again, and you know why? Because when dad takes the kids to Target, it's a big deal. But even though you did it 73 times since the last time dad took the kids to Target, and it's just one of those things where when somebody's really consistent and somebody always shows up and somebody's always available, it's easy to forget the incredible that's being done, but it doesn't negate the incredible that's being done. So if you're a mom in this room and you feel that way on a day in, day out basis, because here's the deal, today, hopefully you're going to brunch somewhere, or somebody's making you food, you got cards and maybe cool gifts and all that, and then guess what's gonna happen? Wednesday's gonna happen. And nobody's gonna say those things again, but you still do all the stuff that you do. You're still picking up the pieces. You still clean things four times a day, even though they shouldn't have to be cleaned once. That's just what being a mom is, and we are so grateful for you. Can we give it up for the moms in the room right now? (laughs) 
We want to also celebrate those that are brand new to our church who came for the very first time today. Come on. Welcome. We're glad you're here. 